Hi there, folks. This is WP Tonic, episode 106. And I've got my beloved co-host. Introduce yourself, John. Hello, my name is John Locke. I run a small WordPress consultancy called Lockdown Design. Sounds great. You went that route, folks. So this is going to be part two of how to make your WordPress website into a speed machine. Um, we had a great panel discussion on Saturday. If you go to show show notes that um, show 105 and the show notes, and um, it was a great discussion. But we ran out of time, folks. So we thought we'd give it another butchers and um we'll look at the elements that we didn't get time to really go into enough depth so john i think um we'll look at cdns first we did discuss them in show 105 but um can you give the audience a brief outline what a cdn is sure thing uh what a cdn is is that is an acronym for content delivery network and it allows browsers to download more components of a web page uh, more quickly. How web browsers work right now is they can only download like one resource at a time from each domain. And what a CDN does is it allows you, uh, like your user's browsers, to download from another domain. So you're downloading uh, almost twice as fast uh, because those resources aren't blocked. And usually you put stuff like your JavaScript, your CSS, and your images on the CDN. Oh, that's great. We, we covered this extensively, folks, in show 105. So go and either look at the show notes or have a good old listen to the episode. It's great stuff. Um, I'm going to take caching plugins. Um, well, like I say, um, we went through all the leading ones. Um, one of the things I'll just point out, folks, is I've seen people have multiple caches. You know, their um, hosting provider's got a cache. They've got a cache plugin. Um, also, CDNs can do some caching. You can end up with a lot of caching, so you've got to keep yeah. that in mind. Would you agree with that, John? I would. Uh, give the folks at home just kind of a brief outline of you, if you can, of kind of what caching does. Well, Fundamentally, it it kind of in temporary mem in the browser memory, it kind of puts a version of it. Um, so if something doesn't change that regularly, it kind of watches, and then if it kind of checks things over a period of time, and you can adjust that, or some of some of these plugins or services. Uh, you have normal settings, but normally you can go in and flush it or set it. But they check the website to see if there are any changes. If it doesn't, but um, if it doesn't, if it doesn't do that check, it it brings up a stored version, and um, so it means the browser's not having to upload everything from the ground up. Because you, you probably notice, folks, if you do fr flush out your browser, the cache, your passwords, all the all the kind of cache in your browser, and you load a page up, it normally takes a fair while. Am I explaining that reasonably, John? Yeah, that sounds perfectly right. It's it's kind of like storing a snapshot of, of your site resources and the things that haven't changed like it. Uh, just says okay that hasn't changed and we'll just pull from right here yeah so. let's, let's let's quickly go for number three because um but we did discuss that extensively so um i think one of the you know um the other things we discussed folks we went into hosting and themes and we're not going to discuss this now yeah but optimize imaging um, it, um I think this is a biggie when it comes to speed and it a lot of um, people that are not professional web designers or developers or some that say they are um you can get into a real pickle on this can't you with the sizes of images that you lined up can you give a quick explanation why this is important john well yeah so in the average web page uh every byte of information every piece of data that you have to download takes time and the resources in your web page 
that take the longest to download, or I should say, make up the biggest component of, of most web pages are images. Uh, because that's all that data that makes up the, the photo. Um, is It's a lot more data than there is just in regular HTML or CSS or JavaScript. So optimizing your images or just uploading the correct size image to begin with will save you a lot of page weight and therefore make your uh, page speed quicker. It, the people who are coming to your site, their browsers don't have to take as long to download. Yeah, and I think John and see if John agrees with you. I think the the biggest problem is uh, what a um, smartphones, Android, iPhone. People uh, upload when you upload you upload from your iPhone and from your smartphone and you don't understand that much about resolution folks those pictures are enormous and um they're like two three thousand pixels lengthwise and god knows height and then they go into um into your library or you import them your library and then with wordpress you can crop them but you're still up so it looks okay, but you're actually uploading the original photo. Is that correct? That's correct, isn't it? Yeah, that does happen a lot of time. There's many cases where you know you'll build the site, and then the client will be okay. I'm going to add photos to it. Why is this web page taking so long to upload? Um, this page is really slow, and a lot of times it'll turn out they're taking a photo with their phone. And these photos are basically the, the same size as if you took them with a professional camera, uh, uncropped, unresized, unoptimized, and just loading them directly into their site. So, and I, I don't know if you've ever, you know, sent like photos through the mail, like your email, like with your phone, but most of those are like approaching like two megabytes, just each photo. So yes, that can make a huge difference in your page speed right away. Now, one of our um, great panel came up with a nice plugin. It's called Insanity or Insanity. I M S A N I T Y, and it'll be in the show notes for this episode as well, folks. And Insanity automatically resize huge image uploads. It sounds pretty sweet. Have you actually used it yourself, John? I have not used it, but I have seen this plugin before. Uh, the The plugin image you can't miss it. Uh, it. It is a free plugin in the WordPress plugin repo. Uh, so I, you know, definitely something to check out. If it resizes those large files, and that's definitely something to check out. And another one that came from the panel, um, Optimizer Zilla. O P T I M I Z I double L A, and it's an online service image optimizer. Use smart combination. It, um, you can upload twenty image, and it compresses them and does all sorts of things. And um, it looks like it's a free service. Actually, um, could be yes, quite useful. Does. Looks. I've um, never tried it myself, but I think I'll give that a butcher's as well. What are you yeah, Optimizilla. Uh, that's definitely something to check out. And and compressing, for those people in the audience that don't know what that means, uh, say you've got a photo and you've got 100% of the information there, what compressing does is it takes out just little bits of information here and there that aren't going to affect the overall quality of the image. You can you know remove like 10, 20, 30% of the information from the photo and it's going to be indiscernible to the naked eye, uh, but it's saving like you know ten, twenty, thirty percent of the of the weight of that image of the file size. So it's funny how things come back and go in website design and development in it, John. Because when I first started, you know, you used to have to go in Photoshop and spend hours optimizing yep. your images, and then broadband hit, and you thought, oh, those days are gone. And now with the mobile back, they come back again, don't they, John? Yeah, that's true. And we are living in a mobile first society where more, way more than half of the total internet usage is on your phone. I mean, actually, that was almost two and a half years ago where that tipping point 
began, where mobile outpaced desktop use. And now everybody has the phone in their hand from the minute they wake up until the, the minute they go to bed. So you have to optimize for mobile. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right, so let's go on to another one. Um, there are websites, folks, that give you insights about what is turning your beloved website into a sloth. Um, <laughs> um, and one of the main ones becomes, comes from the beloved Google, and um, it's page speed insights. But um, to make that totally happy is practically impossible. You've got any insights about Google page speed and how you should treat what they're saying, John? Um, okay, so with Google page speed insights, it's basically a guideline of, of what you should be doing. Most of the information there that you're going to find is good. Um, it's going to give you like general advice, like, you know, compress your images and make sure you're not... Uh, make sure you're not render blocking, you know, p putting stuff like in the uh, head of your document. This is kind of developer -y stuff. This is uh, kind of developer centric talk. But basically, you don't want like files that have to download before the whole page can render in the top of the page. You want to put them toward the bottom. So, JavaScript toward the bottom. Um, it's going to tell you stuff like, you know, here's uh, some tips to make it faster. Basically, now <laughs> that being said, Google really pays attention to how long the page actually takes to render, and specifically, one of the most important things is the time to first byte. And part of that has to do with your server configuration, part of that has to do with the way that your theme might be set up, but essentially. I would say about 85% of like what Google Page Speed Insights is telling you is correct. I will say this too, getting 100% on there is impossible if you use Google Analytics. If you use any sort of third party, so let everybody know that, I'm going to say that one more time, there is no way to get like 100% in uh, Google Page Speed Insights if you use Google Analytics or pretty much any third party tool. Uh, like embedded like analytics code because those things change. They don't have, uh, they're not cached like on your server. They're yeah. cached on Google server. And the other thing you got, well, uh, to see if John agrees with that, it's just a warning, folks. One of the other areas, depending on how you theme, I'm not going to go into all the kind of developer tacky talk, folks, but um, one of the things is compress your CSS and your JavaScript, mm -hmm. and there are third-party plugins that um, if you do a Google search, folks, you can find, and they can do this. Do not do this on your live website, folks. Um, not a great idea. Normally, um, because you can not work out that well, the effects. And Test sometimes it somewhere you, first. Is that what you're saying, Jonathan? Test it somewhere? Well, yeah, because sometimes you can't reverse it as well as you thought, which um, on a live site, especially if you ain't got your effective backup re re regime, ain't going to be a great in ending for you folks. Um, so it depends if you've got backups, you've done a backup, you've got a, a test site um, that you're trying to use one of these plugins to compress all your CSS. And what I mean by compress is um, all the kind of white space um, in depending if the person that coded it up is nice and tidy. But then uh, it depends on how the theme was developed. Sometimes they provide nice, nice tidy worker theme developers. They provide a non-compressed um, file just so you can see that. And then they provide a compressed version that type of thing. That's about right, isn't it, John? Yeah. So, yeah, like when you're talking about compressing like HTML and uh, JavaScript and CSS and taking all the white space out of that, th they sometimes call that like minification as well. And it's kind of the same thing what we talk about with the images where you take out the information that's not needed. When you minify like your HTML, you're taking out all the code comments, you're taking out all the white space, and like so your CSS or your JavaScript is just going to be like one continuous 
like string of characters. There's no white space. So if you minify that's not really human readable, it's just a big smush of characters, but it still works. You're just yeah. taking out all the white space and saving a, little, a few more bytes. So, um, but be careful with these thirty-party plugins because um, like some of them work. You just got to try it out, folks. It depends. Um, what would you say? You know, excluding membership and um, e-commerce. Um, let's say just a promotion website. How far? You know, realistic in your experience. How high can you get? Get it? Can you get it into the mid nineties or low nineties for the page speed? Google. I, I would say 90 is, that's a reasonable goal. I mean, definitely you want to get it like above 85 if possible. I mean, 90 is very reasonable. 90, you know, low 90s is yeah. very reasonable. So the other tool is, um, I don't know if you've got one that you like, but the one I, I, I use a little bit is Pingdom. Um, Pingdom, uh, tools.pingdom.com. I find their information quite useful. Is there anyone that you use? Yes, I have used Pingdom in the past. And for the listeners at home, that is basically it. You can see how long it takes to download the site uh, from a certain location. or uh, And basically it tells you like how many seconds, how many milliseconds it takes to download your page so you can get a real sense of you know how fast is my page actually downloading the only thing with it, it some of the language is a bit techy isn't it but if you do a google yeah. search there's plenty of write-ups and info about yeah. what it means isn't yeah. it so yeah, i think we're gonna i think we go for our break folks and we'll be back um, with more advice on how to turn that slow of a wordpress website into a speed cheater be back in a minute, folks. We're coming back. Like I say, um, it's all about how you turn that sloth into a cheater. Do you like that met metaphors, John? Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. I'm trying, but I, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be entertaining, John. I'm not, sure. I'm not, I want to mention... Say, we were yeah. talking about, oh, I'm sorry. I did not mean to interrupt here, but I want to mention like there's two more tools that I like want to mention when we're measuring like page speed really quick. There's one is the WP Engine has like a speed test tool, and they're basically collecting your information. They'll try and contact you later, but they will give you an actual snapshot of your site. Like as it's, uh, you know, as it downloads, and then it'll give you some suggestions. The really cool thing is, like Pingdom, it'll give you a, you know, how many seconds it takes to download. But there's two things it'll measure. It'll measure uh, the above the fold, which, you know, how long that takes to to uh, download, which is like what's on the top of the screen, and then like the full page. And one other thing that you can do too if you're a developer is go into Chrome developer tools uh, and I think it's like you go into either like network or something like that you go in there you can see there's a certain setting where you go in you can reload the page and you can see what the time to first byte is and that and again that's I know that SEO roundtable and a couple of other places like Moz have written about this. Time to first byte seems to be the one speed metric that really has like an influence on page rank. So great stuff. Um, let's go on to useful tools. Um, one I found, um, which would be in the show notes, um, it's um, Tomaz um, WordPress. Gonzales, I don't know where to get these words from, folks. I'm going to spell it out. It's WordPress hyphen G O N Z A L E S and um, WordPress hyphen Gonzales. And what it does, it's really cool it, um, because a lot I found, and I'm just going to see if John agrees with this, that um, the nitty gritty of this, folks, is we've gone JavaScript potty the industry it's just gone 
bonkers about JavaScript for everything. jQuery, here we come, and every and nodes and all the rest of it. And you got all these you got all these plugins and and the theme and the plugins. And WordPress does come with its own own version of jQuery and some of the, these other JavaScript libraries. And but a lot of the time, for various reasons, understandable reasons. Um, developers either call in external libraries, blah, blah, blah. And it's just a ton of scripts being called. And they tend to be called on every page, even if the page doesn't use that script. So what this plugin allows you, folks, is you can switch off individual scripts. It comes with an interface and you can test it and you can see if that script's been loaded or it tells you if it isn't um, being used on that particular page and then you can say don't call it that's not bad is it john that's pretty good so say if i had a slider like on the home page and you would do that anyway john would you no i no i wouldn't but other people might uh it happens quite often but let's just say for the sake of argument Say that that you're coding up a page and you've got like this, you know, slideshow, this carousel at the top of the home page. So this plugin that you're describing, it basically says only load the JavaScript for this slider on the home page. You can totally have that granular control. Yeah, not bad, is it? I'm, that I sounds pretty it. awesome. I haven't used it, but the person that recommended it seemed to know what he's talking about. So this, but it's you know, it's worth a go, isn't it? Not yeah. on your life. But not on your live site, where, folks. Don't try something. Yeah, remember, Never. don't don't cowboy code. Have a staging server and all that. Yeah. 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 Well, um, so let's have a look. Um, disable embeds. Um, so basically, um, WordPress comes with a. It was the, the last couple of versions of WordPress. They come with embeds and. Seemingly, they can take up a bit of. Um, so, this one um, is called disable hyphen embeds. Have you heard of that, John? I've not heard of that. Uh, I do know that like WordPress has the O embed a feature now where you can drop in uh, like a URL or you know embed like basically like a a, a different page. You can embed, say, here's this other site, and I want to embed it in this page, and here's like a little yeah, that's what, what they call uh, like the card. Yeah, yeah where it's, it's like a total a little... pain. In, it's a total. Oh, I'm going to sound like an old grunch in there. Um, I would just wish they had something on the tick box for each page, so you could untick it, because uh, half the time it stuff starts appearing, uh, and I can't get rid of it, and I have I want to format it myself. Do you understand what I'm talking about, John? I do know what you're talking about. Like, yeah, where you're dropping in stuff and and basically almost like Facebook does, where you drop in a URL yeah. and then it'll pull in that card of the, like a mini card of that page. That's basically what the uh, OMB uh, feature on WordPress is doing now too. Yes. It's kind of like Twitter is the same thing. It's the same it thing. But WordPress core team, this isn't Facebook, so give us an option, will you? Uh, we got to um, compete with Facebook too. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, on to the next one. Disable emotion cons. These are these horrendous, what do I call them? Um, a smiley face. and a it, Yeah, we used to call them smileys back in the day. What uh, now? And now we're calling them like emo uh, emojis. Emojis. Yeah. Emoji. Yeah, yeah, well, that gets loaded, folks. Even if you if you probably don't even know what the hell we're talking about, but they're there and it's loading. And um, it, I don't I don't know how much time you're going to save, with, but it all helps, doesn't it, John? So there's a plugin. It'll all be in the show notes, folks. Disable WordPress emotion cons. It's called. Yeah. So I'm. I'm. So I'll say this. Like so, with the emojis. That's basically like a font, like that's loading like all the time. So if somebody like wants to put like type like a colon, like the parentheses and make like a little smiley face, it loads that font. So this basically says don't load that font, and we can save like one more font file. Uh, look, can I tell you this story, John? I had a client yeah, about a year ago. They, that, that's how they used to communicate with me by text. You used to have to see the smiley icon. <laughs> I'm not a crying one. 
That's how I used it. I'm not kidding yeah. you, folks. That's how they use it. I, I, I think it's like the texting talk is like getting like really, it's gotten really creative, like with the flipping tables and the oh. and the shrug. People are yeah. really, really creative. But yeah. that, that, I'm going to say this really quick if I can interject. Uh, that reminds me of something else, too. Uh, John, comes- John, you don't mean, I've got to explain. John's very polite to me. What he means is, you're talking dribble, Jonathan. Can we get back no, on no, to no, the no. subject? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what you're saying reminds me of something else. Uh, when you say, like, the, you know, you don't want to load the emoji font, uh, that's another thing, too. Um, you know, s- staying away from themes where you load up, uh, you know, a different font for every, you know, like the every headline and like the body text. Uh, when you're setting up like a theme, if you're a developer, do you kind of be cognizant of your Google fonts and how many you're using in your design? Don't load up like the entire, you know, like five fonts and like every variation of that in your design. Uh, yeah, what about these Swiss Army kit um, from certain marketplaces? I've got a feeling they're, they're – are they loaded? Because they come with a load of – are they loading all those fonts automatically, do you think? Well, if people select them, they, they give people the option to load a different font. Like, say, if you, you want, like, open sans, like, extra bold on the headlines, and then uh, let's say, like uh, – the Montserrat on the body text, but then on this other headline, you want to load uh, cap. And... No, you have to, don't go any further. It was making me feel ill, actually. And, <laughs> uh, all right. Um, there you go, folks. Get one of those themes that have about 60 different freaking fonts loaded at once. <laughs> Watch your the... site bog down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, folks, English sarcasm. Uh, um, uh, then we got something very linked to what you were saying about Google. It's called local host analytics. And I've got a feeling it enables to run on your local, if you've got a, lo- a version on your local machine, it may, I don't know, uh, I did read, folks, it's been a long day. But it's, um, it, it's called host analytics CSJS hyphen local. Um, so I think it gives you either a local version or it does something where the problem John was talking about where you can never get close to 100 with Google, especially if you've got Google Analytics, which is quite funny really, isn't it? One of their own products makes it practically impossible to get 100. This helps in some way. Well, I should have read it a bit more carefully. It came from the um, one of the better uh, of our... Um, panel on saturday do you know anything about this john or am i just waffling Uh, you're not waffling you're actually introducing me to something that i didn't know about uh and that seems that that would be like a good time to test like when you're still developing the site on your you know local machine or your laptop or your you know desktop computer uh and seeing like hey like here's some areas that can be improved that would be like a good time to like find that out and not after you've launched it <laughs> yeah i'm going to go through some resources now folks that if you do a google skirt wordpress speeding up or wordpress my my wordpress site is like slow treacle or something like, that. like molasses, uh, in, uh, molasses in uh, january yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, they, but there's the Gregory, I'm going to butcher his name, but they always, um, Cote, um, C-I-O-T-T-I, C-I-O-T-T-I, Gregory Cote. If you do a search, he always comes almost up one in search, and it sparenmind.com, speed up WordPress. He always comes up. I've read it a few times, the article, and it's not bad. Um, it's mostly about how to deal with Google's um, page ranking. Um, another one that comes up, be a little bit, he, he's got a lot of plugins that he says, do this, do that, do the other, which is fine. I wouldn't do it on your live site. All right. Um, what do you reckon, John? Always test on a developmental site uh, before you port those changes to live. Uh, don't 
experiment on your live site. Yes, definitely. And then we've got um, a regulars from Smash. That I've read all this stuff numerous times, folks. So I've got articles on Smashing Magazine. It's, a little, it's from 2014, but I think it's been updated. Um, how to speed up your WordPress web website that's not bad and then another really popular one um from oh the people that specialize in all those multi-site plugins john uh, um, wpml they're always uh, coming that's up. multi-language wp the i know who you're talking about yeah they when you always do a search you know it's, it's like there's like four websites that always turn up folks and they, yeah. they've always got very extensive um um, how do how to do's and this one is the ultimate mega guide to speeding up your wordpress by diane dianki park tasky um polish folks so it's d-a-n-i-e-l aren't you happy john that i have to try and pronounce these names aren't you i'm i'm pretty ecstatic about it Actually, yeah, yeah, I can tell the smile because I make a dog's breath of this, don't I? I, I, I get, <laughs> I, I, I get a few notes from you, you, beloved listeners, about my pronunciations. I'm very happy that it makes you laugh so much, folks. Um, but um, it's a it's a mega write up, and it's not bad, folks. So I've given you a kind of free kind of um, another one is from Brian Jack. Um, I think it's workup.com. Um, Brian Jackson, his name, he's been on a couple of other pod, podcasts and he's spoken about, so it's uh, com, and he's got some good posts on that website with some good advice about how to turn that sloth into a cheetah. So, John, I think we've quickly gone through what we didn't manage on Saturday. Got any kind of ending comments? Uh, sure thing. One other thing I want to mention is if you're coding up a site, you can use a uh, technique that was first talked about by Harry Roberts of the wizardry fame, and that is the DNS prefetch, uh, where you s save a few milliseconds by having browser look up pre-looking up uh, the domain of certain resources uh, use this sparingly don't go hog wild on it but uh, just look that up DNS prefetch Harry Roberts and you'll, you'll get a better idea of, of what that is so. does it work, does, do you use that when you're kind of getting close to that 92 93 that you're aiming for and you just can't do it I yeah it that won't really show up in your Google Page Speed Insights at all. No. It we it'll you know in depending on like how much you use it it'll save you you know ten milliseconds twenty mil, milliseconds thirty milliseconds there uh, here and there because what it does is instead of having to look up the domain name uh, when the browser goes to download the resources it will. Uh, just already look it up before it, it goes to try and render the page. And what this is good for, say, if you've got resources from Google, like APIs, like you're using Google Fonts, or uh, say you're using like Facebook for something, uh, it will go and look up that domain name. For your own domain name, it doesn't need to look it up. It's just for external right. domains. So. Yeah, that can, um, the DNS, yeah, that that can, it's something that comes with these checkers. I don't think Google Page looks into this, but some of the other checkers, we have all that. They do, um, one of the other fact, factors is your DNS and how it's treated, folks. It's a bit techy. Probably have some links in it, but what John's talking about is an important factor. I forgot about that because how your DNS is treated can especially if it's not there's something wrong it can really slow it down can't it john uh that's true um and depending on like what you say if you had a site and uh you were linking to google uh like analytics or something like that and say it was like in the head of your like html document and so let's say google analytics was like completely down uh that would be looking for that you know file to render the page so 
depending on like what you link out to 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 assemble your page, it can affect um, like how long it takes for your page to render. So it's just one of those things you want to like just shave like a few extra bytes here and there. So it's I would say tackle all the other things first, then you know start looking at like little things like that. Yes, that is great news. All right, and folks, we, um, thanks for listening. Um, do remember, folks, go to iTunes, subscribe to the show, and please give us a, a review on iTunes. All you have to do is either click the five stars or there's another button nearby, and you can write up a little review, and that would be gracious. And why not join us on Saturdays at, um, between 10 a.m. and 12 noon, Pacific Standard Time on Blab IM. We have a, a great panel every Saturday of WordPress experts. We love people joining us on Blab and leaving their comments, questions, need any help. In the second hour, um, if Blab doesn't blow up, we normally try and help people out. Um, and I won't be there this Saturday. I'm going down to Orange County, folks. Um, so John's going to be on his own. Do you think he's flying gonna... solo? <laughs> <laughs> right see you next next episode folks bye say goodbye john goodbye <laughs>